Welcome back to another video guys and welcome back to the channel. If you are new around here then my name is Will and I guess you could say I am a travel enthusiast or someone that absolutely loves travel. So if you are new around here, then please consider subscribing because plenty more adventures, travel advice and travel vlogs to be made in the future. So in today's video, I am pretty much going to be explaining how I've been able to travel on and off for the last five years. And the key words there are on and off because many people for some reason think that I've been traveling continuously for the last five years, but that is not the case. So uh, in today's video, we will dive into all of that and it will basically be a story time and the history of my last four or five years traveling. So I guess this all started for me back in 2014 when I was studying at a university here in England and I decided you know what, this just isn't for me. I wasn't feeling it. I didn't want to stay in education anymore, stuck in classrooms, taking notes. So you know what, I decided to quit. After quitting university, I had no real plans at all, but thankfully I did have two friends that were in Australia at the time and I thought, you know what, screw it, I've got nothing else to do, so I might as well head off to Australia and meet up with my friends. So obviously before going to a country like Australia, which is fairly expensive, I needed to save up some money. So after quitting university, I got a job working in a warehouse earning six pounds an hour, and I managed to save up a couple of thousand pounds in my six months before heading off to Australia. So after arriving into Australia and looking literally for any job under the sun, I finally again managed to get a job in a warehouse because I had a previous experience. It was the only job that would really take me. So hey ho, it was all good. I was getting $25 an hour, which is a big jump compared to what I was getting here in the UK because the salaries in Australia are absolutely incredible. Obviously the living costs are slightly higher, but if you want to earn money, you go to Australia. That's the place to go to for sure. So me and my friends all worked and lived in Sydney for the first six months of our time there. And then we all knew after we'd saved around $5,000 that we wanted to travel the East Coast of Australia. So that's exactly what we did. So in January, 2015, we headed off on a group tour bus and traveled the East Coast of Australia which was absolutely incredible and some of my favorite memories of my travels are all where it started back in Australia traveling the east coast with such an amazing group of people and you know the beautiful landscapes and terrain that Australia has to offer but shortly after that after three months my money was pretty much running out but I knew at the time Australia might be a place that I'd love to come back to in the future so I decided to do my farm work to get my second year visa so the next three months were spent on a banana farm up in Cairns doing banana picking which again is probably one of my favorite ever memories that I've had in my life so far because I was full of a hostel with 80 other backpackers who were all doing exactly the same horrendous work of the banana farms, but it was so enjoyable, so much fun. I made so many great friends and memories there. And again, the great thing was I was earning $25 an hour. There was absolutely nothing nearby to spend your money on. So during that farm work, I managed to save roughly around eight to $10,000 in the three months on the farm. After saving up all this money, I headed off to Perth in Australia to work for my last two months in Australia. So then I would have a decent amount of money which I could then go and spend on my next travels. I headed off to Southeast Asia to countries like Thailand, Laos, Cambodia. I didn't go to Vietnam because my money ran out, but I also went to New Zealand and to Bali in Indonesia. New Zealand is a very expensive country to travel to, but again, absolutely stunning and 100% worth it. So if you can get there, then definitely Definitely do. Southeast Asia is obviously a lot cheaper and you could probably get away with spending maybe 700 pounds to a thousand pounds a month. Now it might be slightly different because obviously the more tourism that's happened there in the last five years, things are probably slightly more expensive. But just a quick recap, quitting university, getting a job, going to Australia, getting a few jobs in Australia, saving up some money, then heading to Southeast Asia and New Zealand. And then in December the 24th, I think it was, of 2015, I surprised my family and went home dressed as Santa Claus, which was maybe one of the best days of my life, coming back after 18 months of being away and completely surprising my family. That was such an awesome feeling. And uh, yeah, I'll put the video on the screen so you can at least watch a bit of that. So after all that time of being away, I really thought to myself, maybe the traveling is done. I'd been away for a long period of time. I'd been to a few countries and I thought you know what now it might be time to kind of settle down get a career I was 22 21 at the time so 
you know, that is the time when society pushes you in that direction. There's pressures from family, from friends. Other people are going that way of life. So for me, I also felt the pressures. So when I was back in England after my time away, as I'm sure many people felt, I felt like, what the hell am I doing with my life? Where am I going to go? What is my purpose? All these kind of questions that were running through my brain every single day. But I did have one goal in mind, which was to learn to be an electrician. Now, this was a goal which I'd set because I knew that in Australia, you could go there as an electrician, earn good money, and you know, I could potentially settle out there. So that's what I did. I learned to be an electrician in England, doing a six month fast track apprenticeship, I guess you could call it. After doing the apprenticeship or halfway through, I realized, God, I hate this. I don't want to be an electrician. However, I still qualified and everything like that. And I actually got a good job working for an audio visual company up in London, earning I think around 24,000 pounds, something along those lines, I can't exactly remember. And at the time being 21, living still with my parents, that was, you know, a decent wage for someone my age at that time. So I remember thinking, to be honest with you, like, is this my life now? I have a good job, there's progression here, I could go supervisor, manager, whatever, whatever, whatever. I could move up the ladder, probably earn some good money in the future, and then settle down. But after just over a year, I had this itching feeling and desire to go away again. There was not a single day that went by when I wasn't thinking about traveling and getting out of England because for me, England is not the place where I really want to live in the future. Although I love this country, it's not somewhere where I can see myself staying long term. So I felt like I needed a change. I felt like I needed to get out of my comfort zone. So I thought what country would be good to get out my comfort zone, push myself, and it's cheap to travel to. And I came up with the idea of heading off to India. So in my electrician job before I went to India, I managed to save 6,000 pounds, which again is more than enough when you go to a country like India. Again, when I went, I had no plans at all. No idea how long I was gonna stay out for. No idea if I would come back home, which countries I would go to after. I just had the money in the bank, which I'd saved from working and the world was my oyster, but I absolutely hate that saying so much, even though it's true, I hate it, but I can't believe I just used it. So in January, 2017, I headed off to India on a one-way ticket and spent the next four to five months traveling around India and also one month in Sri Lanka. It was absolutely incredible and exactly what I wanted from India and Sri Lanka was getting out my comfort zone, which certainly happened, a culture shock because I've never really been to a developing country like that. But India is absolutely incredible. I loved my time there and I can't wait to go back there in the future. And I think I spent around 4,000 pounds in those six months that I was traveling between Sri Lanka and India. So once again, I obviously came back home and this time I was even more headless or screwless, whatever the word is, of what the hell will I do with my life? I honestly didn't have a clue. And every time that I went away, I kind of felt like I would come back with a bit more enlightened. I would feel like I had a bit more of an idea of what I wanted to pursue. But you know, going away twice at this stage in my life, it wasn't the case. Every time I came back, I tried to settle back into a normal life and all I could think about was going away again. This time though, I did use my brain and I realized what is the one thing that I absolutely love more than anything. And if you know, well you should do if you watch this channel, it is travel. So I applied to all these jobs in London working as a travel executive, travel salesman, ski rep, all these kind of stuff. And you know what? Nobody would take me because I had no sales experience. However, one day I called up one of these small holiday companies which specialized in selling ski holidays. And I think the fact that I called them, they really liked that because I took the initiative and it showed that obviously maybe I was a little bit sales driven or I was comfortable on the phone. So I called them up, had an interview and I got the job. But it didn't all plan out as well as I'd hoped. I worked for a very small ski company in London for about three weeks until the company basically wasn't making much money and it was the classic case of first in, first out. So after three weeks, I didn't get made redundant or I wasn't fired, but they just basically said, can you leave because you know we don't have enough business to keep you here. So I thought, Christ almighty, like I'm going back to square one again. I've tried to pursue something in travel. I was trying to get the experience in sales so that, you know, potentially I could go into the travel industry in the future. But, uh, you know, this was one of the first hurdles in the road. What I did after this was a classic quote and motto to a lot of people was fake it till you make it. 
and that is exactly what I did. There was a big holiday company in London who were looking for new employees, so I applied to them, I lied on my CV, I said I had about six months sales experience when in actual fact I had about three weeks, but I knew in myself, I knew I was confident I could do sales, I knew I knew the type of person that I was, that I could pick up the phone, talk about travel, talk about holidays, and do a good job. So I went into the interview, absolutely smashed it, and I got the job working for a company called Club Med, which was the company I was working for right before I left to travel to Nepal. This was kind of the little breakthrough that I thought that I was looking for. I was in the travel industry, I was working for a good, reputable, ugh, reputable. I was working for a good, I was reputable, that is the word reputable, but I can't say it. Oh, oh. I was working for a good company, okay? A well-recognized company in the travel industry is what I'm trying to say. I worked at Club Med for about a year and a half, doing the sales, building up experience, thinking, you know what? There is a career here, there is potential here. Am I now going to settle down and stop traveling? But after about a year in the company, again, this itching feeling and desire came back to go traveling again. All the while, I was still living with my parents, so I was still able to save up money each month to put aside for not potentially travel, but for a house or whatever it was. I put all of the money that I was saving into a savings account and just built up the money gradually over my time working for the company. And after about a year and a half working, I thought, you know what? This is not the life that I want to live. I don't want to be stuck in a nine to five, being restricted, being told what to do every single day. So I said, screw this, I'm gonna go traveling yet again. Now, at this point, you'll probably imagine what my friends and family were thinking because this is now the third time that I've, in their mind, run away from real life, run away from reality, and I'd missed and potentially wasted a couple of opportunities working for good companies. And, you know, I just pretty much put my middle finger up and said, no, I don't want this life. You can probably see the theme of this video and how I've been able to afford to travel on and off for the last five years. I said in the beginning, there are no secrets because there really aren't. It's literally getting a job, saving up some money, spending my money all on travel, then coming back, getting another job and doing exactly the same. It's a process which I've been repeating for the last five years, travel, work, travel, work, travel. And honestly, I couldn't tell you when I'm going to stop. I really don't know. All I know now is that I really want to pursue something which makes me feel passionate, which makes me feel alive, and that allows me to have freedom. And at the moment, if this YouTube stuff continues to go well, then this is the road that I want to go down. So we will see what happens in the future. So as you will have seen, in February 2020, I decided to head off to Nepal and travel for the next four months. Well, I hadn't planned to stay in Nepal for four months, but the lockdown happened and you know, I've just come back after four months there. But like I said, there are no tips or tricks. It just comes from hard work, dedication, and just putting your mind to a goal, which for me was saving a certain amount of money to then spend all of that money on travel. Because I truly believe that spending your money on travel is the best thing that you can spend it on. I know today's video was probably quite long and I apologize for that. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it wasn't too boring listening to me for the last 10, 20 minutes, however long this video will be. And uh, maybe you got to know me a bit better as a person and kind of what I've been through the last five years. That sounds like I've been through some hard times. I haven't, well, I haven't, I haven't, but that's just been the history and the story of how I've been able to travel on and off for the last five years. So guys, if you enjoyed this video or you are new to the channel, then please give it a like and consider subscribing because there will be plenty of other videos in the future giving travel advice, more adventure videos when I can travel again in the future and plenty of other ideas that I have planned. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and uh, thank you so much for watching. And as always guys, I shall catch you in the next one. Peace.